Good evening. It's been 10 years since the infamous G20 riots on the streets of Toronto, a memory seared into the minds of everyone around the country. Mayor John Tory took a moment today to speak about the lessons the city has learned since then. There were events that were taking place in the city which were of concern. Obviously, it's the job of everybody in the city, the city government and the police service, to maintain safety for people and to maintain order. But I think that it was found when it was looked into later that there were steps taken that were contrary to our way of life here, contrary to the very values we will celebrate on Canada Day uh, in terms of some of the actions uh, that were taken to contain crowds and to, uh, you know, to... Uh, Con constrain uh, perfectly legal demonstrations. So hindsight is always 2020. I hope we've learned from that in terms of how we manage these things, how we police these things. I think we have. In the immediate aftermath of the G20 riots in Toronto, police were accused of acts of brutality as well as egregious infringements on charter rights. The controversial methods used on civilians back then still plague policing a decade later. And while much was learned, experts and advocates say there's still much more work to do when it comes to police accountability. It was a, a pretty sorry day in the history of Toronto and in the history of policing. Multiple Toronto police cruisers set ablaze. Windows smashed, police in riot gear firing tear gas and rubber bullets. On the weekend of June 26th and 27th, 2010, while world leaders met at a lockdown Metro Toronto Convention Centre, protests that were largely peaceful turned violent when a small subset of black bloc protesters splintered off and incited chaos. The police presence was massive. An estimated 20,000 officers from varying levels and regions. There were mass arrests of over 1,000 people and accusations of excessive use of force. One of the most controversial practices took place at the intersection of Queen and Spadina. Riot officers surrounded and closed in on a group of protesters, holding them in place for hours in a technique called kettling. Been in the news business for the city for over two decades. That day will never, like that was insane. We were at this line, so we were, we were pointing west, and as soon as it kind of like we crossed it, you could feel this wall come in and around us, and then they squeezed us in. And all the pro, well, it wasn't only pro, it was everybody. I remember seeing a family with a stroller, like in here. And we were trapped, and you didn't know what was happening. Well, that was very, very scary, and then they started just grabbing people out of the crowd and taking them to be arrested, and you didn't know who was going to be next. Sherry Good and Tommy Taylor are the two lead plaintiffs in separate and ongoing class action lawsuits against the Toronto Police Services Board over alleged civil rights abuses. Taylor was one of the many arrested en masse in front of the Novotel Hotel and detained in the makeshift Eastern Avenue Detention Centre for 24 hours. Along the side there's just cages full of people and they're all screaming and there's porta potties in the cages with the doors off so you can see everyone go to the bathroom. There were a lot of reports and uh, reviews that took place after the G20 that talked about um, things that shouldn't happen again um, and I think police have absorbed you know a lot of those lessons. The other thing that um, that really came into sharp relief after the G20 is is the the failure of our systems to hold police accountable and I, I think that um, that's something that you know, some communities have known for a long time. It was a wake-up call to me when black Indigenous people of colour said, you know, what happened to you uh, is what happens to us every day. And it was like a light bulb going off. They just announced to everybody there, you're all under arrest. And we just, we couldn't believe it. And um, I remember distinctly, uh, everyone started panicking, but these four older indigenous women just sat down and lit up a cigarette and were like welcome to our club everybody law professor and policing expert kent roach says while the outcome of the lawsuits will be important there's still much work to do to address the shocking issues in policing brought into wider scope during g20 there's really no room for complacency and that's why i think it is important for us to remember uh, these events but also to ask the police and perhaps more importantly uh, those who are responsible uh, for the police i mean one of the ironies here of course is that chief blair is now public safety minister blair and i think the history in uh, this city especially has been that politicians uh, who have battled with the police on issues uh, have often come out on the losing end. 
Of the estimated 20,000 police officers in Toronto during the G20 protests, only two were given disciplinary convictions and penalties for their actions. One senior officer for ordering the mass arrests and a constable for beating a protester with a baton.